In this video, we are going to see how to use the Power BI with the most common tools to help us on a daily basis to save time, to automate tasks, and also to create reports and dashboards. I have two different data sets and I need to import them both into the Power BI. And then I need to combine these files using a Chrom endpoint to help me create analysis and some calculations. And to combine those files and create calculations and automations using the Power BI, we're going to need to use a tool that is the Power Query Editor. So we are going to explore many different features and tools that the Power BI has. Before we open the Power BI, there are two different data sets that I want to use. And both of those data sets are a Excel file. The first one is my inventory list and the second one is the sales report. So let me click on both of those files, inventory list and also the sales report to see what we have within those two different Excel files. In this first Excel file, I have the inventory list for all the products that I have and uh, information such as update, date, the product, ID, shop location, quantity, available, unit cost and total cost are very important for me. Because let's say I need to have those informations when I'm trying to create a report using Power BI. Right here, I know that I only have the inventory list. However, in the second Excel report, that is this one right here, the sales report, I have different informations. And I can combine both of those Excel files together. And that way, I'm going to have more informations. And I'm going to also be able to create different analysis. So let's take a look here. Uh, as the sales report, of course, I have all the sales throughout the, the months, January from January to December. The date, order ID, product ID, product name, quantity, unit price, total price, and the customer name. As we can notice, I have the total price and also here the unit price. Let's say I want to calculate in Power BI, okay, I not do any calculation right here in the Excel file because let's say this Excel file changes every day or every other day or every week and so forth. So I will not create any calculation right here to, because I don't want to lose the calculation and I want to calculate automatically using the Power BI. So anyway, imagine if I want to calculate in Power BI what is the margin of the product or what is the gross profit? Uh, those calculations are not possible because to calculate both the margin or the gross profit, I need to have the total price or the price and the cost, cost and price, price and cost. However, as we can notice, there is no such information right, right here that is telling us what is the cost for the products. However, as we did saw before, I have the cost for each one of those products in the inventory list. So this is why it's very important to know how to combine multiple Excel files together when we are using a Power BI application, let's say, or any other tool to create a report. Because that way, as I said before, we can couple informations and we can create different analysis. Okay, so now that we already saw both of the Excel files that we're gonna going to use in the Power BI, Let's go to the Power BI itself. This is the initial screen of the Power BI application. And uh, the first thing that you need to do is just click right here, blank report. Because that way we can have access to all the tools that we need. And to get it started, create the report, the dashboard, the charts, the analysis that we are going to do here in Power BI, we can start to import the Excel files. So you can click just right here, import data from Excel or you can go here into the header and click Excel workbook or get data and then Excel workbook. You can choose any of those three different paths, okay? But let me click here, Excel workbook. And let's first start with the first file that we need to use. That is the inventory list. And then I'm gonna, going to click open. Power BI is going to load here. I can see through this navigator all the sheets that I have through this workbook. I uh, only have one, but if you have more than one, you can click and that way you can visualize what is the data that you have. Let me click here, load. And in the second file, we're going to need to use transform data, but not for now. Let's click just load. Now our data set is already within the Power BI and we can go here to the left. 
uh, and navigate throughout the, the data set. So let's go to table view to see the entire data set. If you want, you also can do some modifications right here, such as uh, sort in a different order, such as, let's say, click here in quantity available. I want to click in the filter and use sort descending, the biggest one to the lowest one. I can also go here to model view to see all the columns that I have. And I can also use this model right here to combine one sheet with another. But we no need to exactly use always this model view to do this. But anyway, let me go back here to the report view to import the second Excel file that we're going to use. Excel workbook. And then I can go to sales report and then click open. It's going to appear here the navigator. Let me select the sheet that I want to use. And I want to click transform data to open the Power Query Editor because the Power Query Editor is very handy and it can help us to clean and modify the data set without modifying the original data set. So as I said before, I want to do here some calculations such as the margin and also the gross profit for each one of the sales that I have. And to do these calculations, of course, I'm going to need to combine uh, the two Excel files. And I don't want to modify the original file because let's say every day or every other day, the original Excel file gets updated. So I cannot modify the original Excel file because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose all the work that I did. So here in the Power Query, everything that you do, everything that you change, all the new columns, the new calculations are going to be saved here to the right. And those modifications are going to work as a automation. So this is why it's very good to use Power Query Editor in Excel. But anyway, let's match those different files using here the Home tab and going to Merge Queries. I need to select a common uh, point, a common value. And it can be, let's say, the order, the product ID, of course, or the product name. But let's stick with the product ID. And then I can select here the second file that is going to be the inventory. So here at the top, I have the sales. And here at the bottom, I have the inventory. And I want to use the product ID in both of those uh, files to match the files, right? So product ID with the ID. This is my criteria to match both of the files. And I can click OK. Uh, Power Query already loaded here for us and create a new column. And we can also see this new step right here, Merged Queries. And if you want to get rid of a step, you can just simply click in this X sign right here. But let me go here. I don't want to see and have all the data within each one of the rows. I just want to have the unit cost. So I can go here to this uh, icon with two arrows and I can uncheck everything but the unit cost and then click OK. Simple as that. Now I have the unit price in the total, the, the unit cost, right? And I can use both of those columns to create a new column to calculate the margin or to calculate the gross profit. So let me go to uh, add column and I want to create a custom column. And with this custom column, I can give it a name such as margin. And the margin I like to calculate like this. Open parentheses, uh, the unit price, okay, double click, unit price minus, let's take here, the she one dot unit cost, one, two, okay. Unit price minus unit cost, close parentheses, and never think all this calculation, the result divides by the unit price again, one, two. Okay, so the thing that I'm doing here is price minus cost in between parentheses divides by the price. Let me click OK. And we're done. So this is our margin. And if you want, you can also change the format of this channel. And again, all those new steps are going to be stored in the Power Query, and that way it's going to work as a automation. So easily change the format, we can right click in the header and then go to change type and select percentage, let's say. Okay, yeah, this is the one that I need. 
And I done. I don't want to do any other modifications, but if you want to, you can do so. Doesn't matter. And again, everything that you do is going to be start right here to the right, and it's going to work to work as a automation. I want to close this power query editor. So I can click here, close and apply. And if we go here to the table view, we can see our data set. And with the two new columns that we created, the unit cost and also the margin. If you go here to the right, you can change the file. So click in the file one to see the inventory, click in the file two to see the second data set. And if we go down to the model view, we can see both of the files, the inventory and also the sales report and the uh, power bi just added here a from point between those two files and of course because we created the columns uh to calculate the the margin and that way you need to have a common point right but anyway now let's start creating our dashboard right here and let's start with something simple such as a line chart so here to the right we can choose any visuals to use let me go to the line chart. Just click on, and this is the line chart that we have. Let me move this chart right here. Okay. Let me bring it to the right to make it uh, the width a little larger. Okay. And what I want to visualize right here, I want to visualize the months and the margin throughout those months. So I can use as the x axis, let's say the second sheet where we have the sales report i can even click here in these three dots and uh, let's rename this sheet because it's easier to it's easier right so it's gonna be the sales report enter okay now it's much easier uh let me go with first to follow the date but i can also click here and i can have more details such as the day the month the quarter the year i want you to stick with the month so the x axis is going to be the month let's click here and drag okay the, we can't see anything yet so let's go here and take uh, maybe the margin and put in the y axis okay now as we can notice i have the margin however it's a sum of the margin i don't want to use a sum but i want to use a average because i think it's make more sense right so let's change instead of using sum just click right here and I want to use a average. Okay, here we go. So in January, the margin was 31%. In February, it was 34. In March, it was 32, and so far. I also want to do some modifications right here in the chart because let's say I don't want to use a decimal as the percentage. I want to use a percentage itself. So instead of 0.34, I want to use 34%. And maybe we can move those values from the left to on the and put on the top of the, the line chart let's start with change the decimal to a percentage so let's go here to the table view and i can go to margin click over the header to select everything and uh, here in the column tools i can choose percentage if you want to you can also increase the decimal places but i think two is okay now let me go back to the report view and as we can notice, now everything is working as percentage. Now let's go here to the right in visualizations and click format your visual. And let's click in the Y axis and I uh, want to disable the title. I also want to click in the X axis and disable here the title. Because that way we have more area to the chart and we get rid of the titles that we had in the left and also here underneath the chart. We can also modify here the title. Uh, average of margin by month let's say but i think it's already okay but uh, if you want to you can go to general and title and let's say uh average margin by month i think uh, it's better now let's go back here to visuals and i want to go to y axis and i want to disable the values here from the left and i want to use instead a data label as we can notice now i have the percentage above that line instead of to the left another thing that we can do is add a little dot to separate the categories so let's do it click here in markers okay and another cool thing that i like is clicking lines and instead of using a linear 
we can use is move. I think it's much better this design right here. And if we increase the width a little bit, it's going to be even better. Like we can clearly see right here. Okay, so the line chart is done. Another chart that we can create right here maybe can be a card to display just only one information, such as the product that sold the most, for example. Or what is the total sold throughout the, the report, the entire report that we have? So let's go to here and choose this little card. Okay, let's move, let's make it smaller, maybe like this. And the only information that I want to display in this in this little card is maybe the total sold. So I can take here the total price, click, hold, and drag into the fields. Now we have a sum of the total price, or in other words, the total sold. We can also change that legend to total sold, and also change here the format of the number. So let's do those modifications and maybe add here also some shadows and a different uh, outline, a different background, and so forth. So let's go here to the right and let me click here in format your visual. Let's start with call out value. I want to use as the display units, let's say none, because that way we can see the pool number. And if we want to transform this number into a currency, we can go back here to the table view and let me select the total price and use a dollar sign like this. I can also select the unit price and use a dollar sign. Okay, now let's go back to the report view. Now we have the number that we need. Maybe I think I can round this number. So let's use thousands. Okay, yeah, I think it's okay. Now let's go to the general and I want to get rid of this legend. And instead, I, maybe I can use a header to this card. I think it's gonna be better. So I want to add a title. And let's go back to the visuals and a category label I can get rid of. General, title, and the title can be total sold. We already can see the text right here. We can increase the size. Maybe I can use 20. And I want to centralize in the middle like this. And I can also create a background color using maybe a gray like this. Let's change to a bold one. Let me increase a little bit more, maybe 24 or 26 or even more, maybe 30. And I can change the text color to a white one. Total sold, yeah. Now let me close the title and open here the effects. Visual borders, I can use a border and I can also use shadow effects like we can see here. And as the background, maybe I can go to, instead of a white color, I can use a bluish one. So let me click more colors to create the blue that I like to use. I think this is okay. Yeah, that's it. So this is our card and the, the card works um, automatically. So every time the data set gets updated, the value is also going to be updated. And another thing very interesting is, as we already have a line chart right here, let's say I click in April just right here, April. Uh, now, the only category that is activated is April. And we can also see through this card right here that the value is going to match with our selection. Let me change to March and May. As we can notice right here, uh, just above, the card is going to automatically update the value whenever we click here in a different category in the line chart. And if we click again, we can select everything. One more chart that we can add here, maybe can be the column chart to see the total sold throughout the months. So let's go here to and select the stacked column chart. I want to match the area of this chart or at least the width with the chart underneath. So we have this redish dots that can help us. Let me bring it up. Let me make this card a little bit smaller like this. And okay, in this chart, I want to see the months in the X axis. And I also want to use the total price in the Y axis. Okay, this is our column chart. With the column chart, it's much easier to click on the value that you want to see because, uh, you know, we have more area to click on. To do some modifications to this chart, let's go to format your visuals. And let me use general first, title. Here we have total sold by month. 
And uh, another thing that I can do here, maybe is using some effects, such as a border and a shadow. And I can also add a border, a, a shadow to the line chart. I think it's going to be much better. Now let's go back to the column chart and make the other changes, such as go to the visuals and in the X axis, maybe we can uh, get rid of the title. So let's disable here the title. And in the Y axis, we can get rid of the values in the title. And instead of using the values, to the left now we can use the values on the top of the columns and to activate the, those values we can go here to the data labels and here we have the values on the top of the columns and for this chart let's change the the, the, the color of the chart let me go to visuals columns and i want to use a different color maybe a orange jewish one and maybe we can also use a border okay so this is our column chart and remember, whenever we click in any column, we can notice that everything is going to be updated for us. And let's say now you want to know what is the product that sell the most. You can use again another card. And uh, let me place this card right here. And I use the same area. Okay. And in this card, I want to have the product name. But uh, here in the product, it's appearing for me B12. But I how power bi knows and uh, understand what he needs to do because i didn't e e specify anything so b12 is just the first product name that i have in the report it doesn't mean that b12 is the most sold product so how can i tell power bi to always show the the product that sell the most so i can go here to the filters options and i want to take again the product name click hold and drag right here in the add data fields and I want to filter based on the product. However, I want to use, instead of base filtering, I want to use top end. And as the top end, I want to use by value of total price. Okay. And I want to show the first, the top one, the product that sell the most. If you want to see the product that sell the least, you can use bottom instead of top. But anyway, apply filter. And yeah, calcium. Calcium is the product that sells the most. And now if we want to see the value instead of the name of the product, we can do something similar. Let me add another card. Uh, click out and then click in the card. Okay. Let me add another one right here. I want to see the value of the product that sells the most. So why is the, the total sold by the calcium? So we can see it. Let's take here again now the, the total price and drag here to the fields. And of course, we're going to have a sum as we have here, the same value. But I want to use some filters using as the filter, the product name. And instead of using basic filtering, I want to use again the top end. But this time I want to use the total price like this in the top one and apply filters. Simple as that. So now I know that the calcium is the most, the product that sell the most with $2.96,000. And if I change it in any chart underneath, as we can notice, the product is going to change. So vitamin C, uh, vitamin C again, vitamin D, and so forth, protein powder, and we can see the values also changing. So those are basically the main tools that we have in Power BI that can help you a lot on your daily basis. And of course, Power BI is an incredible tool to make reports and dashboards, but the focus of this video right here is just to show the tools that Power BI have. Not all the tools, but the most important ones. Uh, the Power Query, and also how can we create charts, how can we create, create cards using the filter options to just show something that we need based on a criteria, such as the product that's, that's sold the most, and uh, what is the value of this product and so forth. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have more videos about Power BI, maybe doing a modern looking dashboard, a beautiful one, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow because every day has a new video.